Hi, glad you could drop by and spend some time with us here at Visual Art Photography Tutorials. Today's tutorial looks at patterns. Now patterns are absolutely everywhere. They're in the natural world, they're in the artificial world, and they can really add something to your photography. We're going to take a look at that today. As we look into patterns today, feel free to address any questions you may have or any comments down below. Let's get going on patterns. All right, patterns. And for our purposes, a pattern is a repeated form or design or something that's regular and repeated. All right, so here's our first photo today for patterns and things that we, we should be looking out for when we're out there with our camera. Perfect example of a pattern, a farmer's field. We can use these things all the time. Another one, and there's a funny story behind this one. This is actually a potato field in Prince Edward Island, Canada. After I took this photo, uh, a farmer came up in back of me and, and asked me, he said, what are you taking pictures of? And I said, well, this beautiful farm field. This is amazing, all the rows. And look at this, look at the way the rows go off. And not only that, but look at, because it's kind of like rolling hills, you get this undulation here and over here. And I just thought, you know something? This is pretty special. So I took a picture of that. But that's patterns for sure in the natural world. Okay, we're looking right now at patterns in the natural world. Another one. Obviously, uh, sand on a beach and you get the, the, the riffling effect here and the wavy effect. And that's patterns as well. Be on the lookout for that. But sometimes you may want to break that pattern up just a little bit like this. All right. You have the various waves and it's all broken up by a jellyfish so that now you have a focal point. Whereas in the previous shot, there is no real focal point. You have the waves and your eye is moving back and forth and all over the place. But here, if you want to bring it down to one point, you can use something like this or perhaps something like this, where you have these waves in the sand and you have a little pebble in the foreground and you have dunes in the background and the sky. But there's various ways to do it as we look again at patterns in the natural world. Again, snow, little, little tiny drifts of snow. You have the shadows coming in from the tree above, across just for a little bit of an added element. But again, patterns. This, these are not uh, necessarily regular patterns. These are kind of irregular patterns, but patterns uh, nonetheless. A pattern here, all right? Four bales of hay, a pattern. They're pretty much spaced uh, pretty regularly. Pattern in the natural world again. Now, here's uh, some corn, and I actually focused in on this particular part of the corn because it was a little bit irregular. Other areas were perfect rows, but I liked the little thing going on in here with this, this one kernel of corn that seems to be out of place. Uh, and I thought, hey, that could make an interesting focal point in a very regular pattern. But corn, again, patterns in the natural world. Flowers, of course, offer all kinds of regular patterns as well. Again, trees with snow on the boughs highlighting the various ways that the, the these branches are all kind of hanging down in a pattern. Now we change over from the natural world of patterns to something that is perhaps combining the natural world and the artificial world as we have a water droplet here and the checkerboard being refracted inside the water drop so you have the artificial with the checkerboard, but you have the natural world with the, with the water drop. Again, a little bit of the natural world with the snow and of course the bricks on the ground, but you have a definite pattern formation here and here as well with the bench and the snow. Now the artificial world of patterns as we have this tent and the, uh, the very regular pattern that is that. And here, the inside of a hot air balloon. Looking for patterns, ways to, to use patterns more 
artificial patterns as we have these three winding staircases, one, two, three in a row stacked on top of each other. By the way, to get the effect, uh, these staircases were not exactly as close as they looked, but I used my telephoto lens at 200 millimeters to flatten, uh, or at least make them appear closer to each other than they really were, which enhanced the pattern. Pattern again. The eye likes patterns. That's why with our clothing, often uh, we have patterns on them. We find them kind of pleasing. Uh, a regular and irregular pattern all in one. Um, regular in the fact that the buildings are kind of similar, irregular in the color, but you get the idea. Again, two silos patterned the same in terms of the metal braces going across uh, and the, the stairs going up. Patterns. Again. And again. Here we're combining some of the natural with the artificial as you have the leaves clinging to this frost fence. And this metal fence obviously is very much a pattern. This is a meat tenderizer taken up close with a macro lens. Looks like little pyramids everywhere, but that's actually a meat tenderizer. But look at the pattern. The edge of a door. And of course, the pattern is being uh, given to us by the Venetian blind. The sun is coming in through the window and throwing the shadows of the Venetian blind on the wall. Patterns. And finally, in the middle of the river here, and uh, the rippling water is offering a pattern. Or this structure is in the middle of the, of the, of the river, and uh, you're not seeing any of the structure above the water, you're just seeing the reflection in the water, but the, the rippling water is, has a pattern of its own. And there are all kinds of patterns everywhere. It's just a matter of looking for them. Some more ideas for patterns. How about spider webs? They can be uh, very pattern oriented or, or leaves. I mean, close-ups of leaves, you see the veins in the leaves. Even a loaf of bread that is sliced will offer you patterns. There's all kinds of patterns everywhere. It's just a matter of learning how to see them. Learning to see patterns can really add a new dimension to your photography. Thanks for dropping by. I'm Ray Scott reminding you until next time, it's not what you see, it's how you see it. And I'll see you soon.